Okay, I'm gonna gauge these holes here with the dial bore gauge with the uh, ball type tips. They work quite well with a micrometer. Bring it to zero. Up wrong direction here. All right, you see that? Can I bring it right to zero there? And we're point three one seven five. Okay. I'm going to make them point three one eight. A little bit of a press fit in there. I got this axles in here warming up. And that's important on old machines to get them to run in temperature. This old machine will do the job and uh, only if it's warm. I got it running into uh, in reverse. That's the nature of an axle son. It'll kick all the oil back to the shafts in the back. An axle son has seven headstock shafts and thus gives it instant reverse. See, here's neutral. Here's forward. It's got reverse like an old truck. These old machines make a lot of racket, but they're really good anyway. I've never seen a busted gear in an Axelson headstock. I don't know if it's possible. There's a lot of stories about these things like getting something caught in, um, in the lower speeds. The machine's so powerful it'll pull the headstock off the machine. They've gotten caught up in chains hanging over the lathe and pulled themselves up the chains. Ripped them off the floor. These things are just really incredible. 24 speeds the motor runs one direction. It's not reversing. One speed motor, one direction. Okay, kick it a little bit more back there. Now get the camera in position. We'll start making pins. Okay, I don't like digital readouts on lathes for a variety of reasons. So I use the Travadial, and then for uh, fine feeding in here, I got a tenth reading indicator on a little sliding mag magnetic base. So that's how I'm going to creep up on that dimension. So I'm going to knock uh, 20 thousandths off this real quick, and that'll get me pretty close. Okay, I'm going to get it going. At, whoa, got to tighten this up here. You don't know how many times I've dropped this GoPro camera, but it keeps going. Okay, I'm going to get it up at 849 RPM. And this one's got to go all the way over. Here we are. Little cutting wax on there. I'm going to touch it off. The material is O1 drill rod, oil hardening.
The feed is just about 3,000. It's just under. It's the finest feed this machine has. Okay. Give it 10 more. Might have to adjust that tool a little bit, but it seems to be doing okay. See where we are here. That's 27. I'm going to cut into it five. There we go. Okay. If I could settle them in here. Looks good. Uh-oh. I'll be right back. I gotta reset that tool. I think I got a little better angle going there. The cutter is Micro 100 Carbide. Oil hardening drill rod. Once I get the first one done, I can set everything at zero. Oh ho ho. That looks very close. Zero this thing out here. Right about there. One of the things about these old LEDs is these uh, old polished dials. They're kind of hard to read. Okay, I'm going to catch uh, the next diameter. I'll be back. Okay, I'm using a uh, vernier height gauge. to get the height right about there alrighty it's going to be six hundred thousandths total length you set the travel dial here, zero. Pull it over six hundred thousandths. Just about like that. Okay, I'm gonna 
back the speed down a little bit here to 473. Come on. Here we are. See if we're in gear. Doesn't seem like it. Okay. A little wax on there. Get my sleeves rolled up here. Now I'm going to feed this in. This drill rod's pretty tough. A little bit of easy does it. Okay, now before I cut that off, I'm going to back it up, move it over 20 thousandths, and I'm going to touch that piece and roll it back to zero, and I deburred the end, saving an operation. That way all the ends are beveled. And so here it goes. Hold on a second, I gotta move some chips down here or I'll lose the thing and won't find it. Okay. This old machine's a real workhorse. Don't need to be in too much of a hurry now. Just kind of get it done. Might be a little off on that height. Yeah, I am. There it goes. Okay, I'll make uh, three more, two more. Well, I ended up having to make four of those pins. I actually screwed up the first one, but that's typical, you know. Then I uh, kind of got dialed in there and I got the fits that I want. And uh, I'll show you, I'll take this off real quick. I haven't tried it yet. If this doesn't work, I'll just plug these holes and start all over. Okay, here's the uh, oversized pin driven in. They were uh, press fit into this right case the way they were and they had a steel sleeve in there and I can't remember ever seeing that before so let's try the left case on it's truth or consequences okay and here is the left case oh one thing I wanted to point out on these you know, these things uh, weak so bad that they over tightened all the fasteners. You can see how divoted they are. And you can see it more on, the, on that right hand case. So this here's the left case. There's the dowel pin holes there, there, and there. So let's see if it fits. And I will stand to the side. <clears throat> oh, they, it looks like it's going to line up. 
lead hammer, refreshing and healthful lead. <laughs> Sounds like it went home. Oh, very good on the cylinder surfaces. Here, I'll take the camera loose. There isn't that step that there was. Just barely here. But that's okay. It looks like the actual cylinder surface on the left case is just slightly high. And maybe I'll face that. But I'll tell you, what I have to do now is I got myself in the squeeze. See, now we're working on the squeeze, squeezing the thing together. I have to punch out these uh, cylinder holes here because I squeezed it together 50 thousandths and the cylinders will no longer fit in. So I have to bore these. And I have two choices. I have the horizontal milling machine here. But I'll go ahead and do it on this, like they did in the factory race department with their bridge ports, okay? So, when I come back, I'm going to have a, a, a horizontal, vertical rotary table on here, and I'll have the cases fixed to that. And uh, it's looking good. It's all looking good. I'm very happy about that. It's been a lot of work. It is a lot of work doing this. Now remember what I told you about that old guy, he's probably long gone 20 years ago on the internet named Hack Asaw. He used to put together old flatheads and old uh, British bikes and made some really cool bobbers. And his quote was, if you're going to do an antique engine properly, you better count on at least 60 hours. Who's going to pay for that now? Huh? Shop rates 100, 100 or more an hour. I know uh, the Caterpillar dealer is around $200 an hour. You know, so uh, it costs a lot to be in business. Doesn't cost me very much. Got this little shack here. Plus, I have a grandfathered in business license. So, uh, I can do it. Okay. Enjoy your day. And I'm glad this phase is wrapped up. So, the next deal is working on these. Uh, getting so the cylinders will go into it. Okay. See you later.